So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Easy Conversations. Thanks a lot to everyone who listened to the last episode featuring the homie Matt and I. Hope you enjoyed listening to us do our all-time best uh, drama TV show draft episode. Hope we gave you some good recommendations and breakdowns on shows you had maybe heard about, hadn't had the chance to see yet, and uh, gave you a good list to delve into as we head into the warm summer months. So now for episode 112 of Easy Conversations. I'm extremely excited, of course, to be back in the studio virtually with the homie Matt. So it's up to the people. What's going on, everybody? Hope you're having a great day right now. If you thought last episode there was a lot of prep and complicated decisions to make, <laughs> wait till you wait till you see what we have in store for you guys tonight. And Eric, why don't you just tell everyone right away what we're doing? Absolutely. So yeah, for this one, we're going to be doing something that we've never done again on the pod. You might have seen before on YouTube videos of other programs doing, but we're going to be basically tiering all of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so the MCU movies, into different categories, starting from S, which stands for Supreme, is my understanding, and then A, B, C, D, E, F. So seven categories for which we have 32 movies to assign to. Now, for symmetrical purposes, we've limited ourselves to five movies per category or grade and then two movies will fall into the f category which because let's be real there aren't that many mcu movies that truly merit an f grade but we'll find a spot for two of them and i just want to say before we get into this this would definitely be an episode that would be better served to watch on youtube instead of just listening to you definitely will be able to follow along as we go through each movie in the MCU, give our thoughts on it, and place it in a category. But I do believe that this would be better served in a visual format. So if you want to just hop over YouTube, type Easy Conversations, or if you type my name, Eric Saloom, it'll lead you to my channel, and you'll then be able to watch. All of our episodes are up there, actually, on YouTube. So if you want to head over there, I would strongly recommend. If not, well, you can continue listening to us as we dissect these movies in sonic form. Now, we're gonna start with the two latest MCU movies that kicked off phase five. So, Ant-Man, Quant- Ant-Man and the Wasp, can't forget the Wasp, Quantumania, and Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Now we're just gonna dive right into this. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. The last time we did this show, Matt, you had not seen Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, I had, I gave my thoughts on that pod in a post-production recording, just ripping this movie. I want to throw it over to you, Matt, first. What were your thoughts on Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, and where would you see this movie fitting in our tiering format? To sum it up in one sentence, Ant-Man Quantumania to me is like a hot mess <laughs> of a story. It's it's definitely going to be an E for me, the yeah. second bottom tier. Um, all over the place at the store. I felt like I felt like the special effects were weak. The story was all over the place. The characters were not well written. Like it was, it was not enjoyable to watch whatsoever. That was my biggest problem with the movie. I only like tiny bit of the. Uh, like I like Kang the Conqueror was cool. And that was might might have been the only redeeming factor. But there's so many things in the movie that took me out of the viewing experience that I I had to give this movie like two stars and I'm ranking it an E. The the stupidest thing in the movie. Minor spoiler here is the giant head Humpty Dumpty floating around. <laughs> I, I was laughable like my girlfriend was watching it with me and she she knows nothing about Marvel and she's like what the hell are we, are you watching why are you watching this right now I'm like I have to watch it to follow like you know to continue the storyline of the overall arc but what a terrible movie Eric one of the worst Marvel movies mm-hmm. do you agree I'm definitely not going to argue with you on that E ranking it's, it's close to an F honestly in my books I don't think it is yeah. though I think there is worse out there but this was a swing and a miss for Marvel on the biggest scale, or I guess literally the smallest scale possible, talking quantum <laughs> realm here. I rewatched this movie in anticipation of this episode. I watched it again, put myself through that punishment on Sunday. 
I'm never watching this movie again <laughs> in my life. Like that's a guarantee. I'm never going back to this movie. I'll just I'm gonna throw it up on the graphic here where it belongs in the E category. Just brutal. And the best part of the movie for me was obviously like that did not change. Was my appreciation for King was definitely my favorite part of the movie. His and mm-hmm. Janet Van Dyme's interactions, like in the past especially, were my favorite parts of the movie. I thought they nailed that. That's what they should have focused on more, in my opinion. Cut the whole... Now, I kind of do want to talk about this movie a little bit with you there before we go to the others. Okay. Full spoilers, obviously, here. Cut the whole refugee part out of the movie. Not only that, but that third act, man, I was so mad watching this the first time. Like I was fuming watching the uprising, the end game, Rise of Skywalker-esque, like, Everyone's joining forces. Cassie Lang, uh, uplifting speech in the tower. I was just rolling my eyes the whole time. It did not hit for me. And then the, like, I want to just drop f bombs here. The ants coming through was so infuriating for me. Like that's like some kid stuff right there. That was for the kids. Maybe that that's it. It does work for kids. But for me, as someone who, and I think this shouldn't just be for kids. I think for everyone. If you're gonna, if you're trying to set up Kang as your next big villain, Thanos level threat, and you're telling me that Hank Pym and some ants in the quantum realm can take him down, that's a joke in my books, an absolute farce. And I could just keep going here, but I don't want to be too negative yeah. off the rip. I think this is probably the worst rant you're gonna get, and I'm glad to get out of the way early because I do love the MCU. But this was just like. Horrible movie, in my opinion. Yeah, and all, like also the horrible thing, like I feel like they just told Paul Rudd to improvise or just do your thing, like without a lot of direction, because like I found I found a lot of the humor with him missed, yes. and I didn't like all the the scene with the million Ant Man's, like the clones or whatever in his head. I didn't like the stuff with his daughter, where she's just like, yeah, yeah, I'm doing my own thing on the side with the technology. Like you'd be furious at your daughter, and you'd be mad at Hank that. Like, she has a suit. Like, that was just happening so fast. Like, oh, yeah, I know how to do everything. Like, almost <laughs> almost everything. Like, that was stupid. And it's called Ant-Man and the Wasp. And I felt like the Wasp had no idea. She was just a side, just tag along character. Mm-hmm. And the Ant things were stupid. The Bill Murray thing put me way out of the movie. Like, casting Bill Murray in that small role. It was so stupid. Stupid. <laughs> um... Glad oh, you were getting me all riled up when you were talking, Eric. I was like, yeah. It's, uh. It was like a cookie cutter. Like, let's just throw all this. Let's have lame green screen background CGI. I'm like, it looked like horrible. Like, the prequel Star Wars trilogy looked better, and it was made 20 yes. years ago. Like, the backdrops. and Or it was as good as that, and that was made 20 years ago, I should say. Mm. I don't know. It felt a very jarring movie. Jonathan Majors was good, though. Yeah. Like, in, I don't know what's happening with him in the future, but, like, he was great in the movie. He was the only good part of the movie. That's all I'm going to say. Ugh. Yeah. I can't believe you watched it twice, Eric. You're a good man for that. Like, two-time watch. Oof. It was really for Rough. this pod and to see if my opinions would change, knowing that it wasn't. And it's like it brings it back to a point that you made a, a while ago now on the pod is, should we be upset if a movie doesn't do what we kind of wanted right. it to do? And like doesn't meet our expectations. I think yes. I think it is totally valid and rational to be upset if something doesn't go the way you want it to, because now it's really like besmirching the greatness that we're used to seeing from Marvel. And yeah, they really, they're really they didn't push the envelope. Like you said, it's cookie cutter. It's like just uninspiring and. I know all the Jonathan Major stuff is so it's very hard to comment on and like say anything because he was the best part of this movie and we don't really know what where that's going now. And in a sense, this movie works in setting up like the future Kings, but now like are we even gonna see this come to fruition is my question. Like there's a lot of uncertainty in the air and uh, it, it definitely is murky, but I don't know. And and that's another thing about this is like, should a movie be excused because, oh, it's setting up stuff. 
I don't think so. I think this movie should have been on its own a great movie, giving us a formidable villain, which they promised us King would be. And then he was really not that. Like, he got punked. And it was frustrating to yeah. watch. Like, he went from being OP to not even being able to take in, take down Ant-Man, doing his best Captain America, I could do this all day impersonation at the right. end. Like, it, that again, it's a lot of stuff that frustrated me. But... Yeah, I agree too. Bill Murray should have been completely cut from this movie. Um, the humor didn't land. A bit of it did. Like when they were clowning Modoc, that was kind of funny. But like there's some very, very cringe dialogue. And I've picked up on a lot of it the second time. Like 80% of, of uh, both Ant-Man and Cassie's dialogue is saying Cassie or Dad back and forth. It was like just very... Again, uninspiring. So, like I said, I'm, I'm done with this movie. Never watching it again. It belongs in E. The more I think about it, maybe it belongs in F. We'll see when we revisit. But I think we're, on my end, I'm good to, to move on from this movie. Sounds good. Let's move on to something <laughs> definitely better. And exactly. This, the, I'll yeah. Do you want to introduce it? Go for it. Sure. Well, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, the other movie we got this year, um... This movie blew me out of the water, Eric. Um, it's my favorite Guardians movie. Like, instead of focusing on the story and have all the dialogue just along to move, just moving the plot along, James Gunn has like character development, and you're laughing and crying, and well, perhaps crying with the characters at the same time. Like, you're feeling emotion while watching this movie. It's got an awesome soundtrack, great setting, action. Um, just. I, I can't praise this movie enough. I was like super, super joyous once the movie ended. Big smile on my face. Good times. In my opinion, this movie belongs. Well, now that we only uh, honestly B. I'm okay. uh, sorry, sorry, not B. A. Okay. I put in the A's. So in the top ten. Okay. Um. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Eric? Okay. So. I like Guard. I actually saw it twice as well, <laughs> but different different outcome. So the first time I saw it, I quite enjoyed it a lot. I'm just gonna jump right away to the second time I saw it. I loved it the second time. So for me, it, it was elevated by knowing where it was going, which is what I was kind of hoping would happen with Ant Man. But anyways, so very emotional movie, satisfying yeah. ending for all of our characters. And again, if you haven't seen, I'm gonna spoil some stuff here. Going into the movie, I was expecting to see one of our guardians, if not two, die in this movie. Now, that does not happen. Yet, they're still able to pull off a very effective, heartwarming, and the gut-punching uh, send-off for all the characters. And I think their endings all make sense. It was the Rocket Raccoon show. They made it quite clear that it was from the first scene. All of the, the flashbacks were really sad and tough to watch. And I yeah. love the development that his character has had throughout all the Guardians movies. Honestly, like, they've had a, a consistent growth in terms of their emotional uh, depth. And like I said, becoming three-dimensional characters. Never in a million years would I have thought that Nebula would be one of my favorite characters in a movie. But she has become a truly a very great and strong character. Like I love that she is now attached to the Guardians. Like Hearing her... Be happy that Rocket is alive and out of the coma at the end. Was like if Nebula is showing emotion, like how can you not in a scene like that, right? Right. Um, it was interesting to see Star Lord not have as much of a starring role in this one, and but I still think he did a good job, like showing that he's struggling to get over Gamora, and I like where they went with her character too, like pushing her down the Ravager. Um, line of work yeah. made total sense that they didn't bring her back to like what she used to be and as a part of the Guardians family I feel like a lesser director would have gone that route but James Gunn like that's the thing he knows this, these characters so well he's written them and blood bled with them cried with them epic scenes too like that hallway scene with the Beastie Boys song playing was so hype and oh. Yeah, I know I've said a lot there, but overall, I really enjoyed it. Um, I agree with A, honestly. For now, I'll say, I could see maybe yeah. it pushing down, but we'll, I definitely don't mind A 
as a starting point for this movie. I get okay, I got the wrong one here. Yeah. Um, it, it was a like a wow. really good movie. Best best movie we've had in a long time from Marvel. Absolutely. Two just two quick things on the movie. The the scene where Rocket Raccoon is clawing the high evolutionary's face like in anger, every hair on my body stood up. Like I had chills, like intense goosebumps basically. Like that moments like that, like I don't get in a lot of Marvel movies, but <laughs> James Gunn's able to like make me feel that way. James Gunn walks the fine line in all his Marvel movies and all the Guardian movies. He walks the fine line of having comedy and like silly stuff but not going over the top. He has the perfect balance, you know? Yes, in Guardians 3, there's a dog that has telekinetic powers, whatever. There's there's some silly stuff, but it's it's done well. He doesn't go over the top like Taika did in 4-4 Thor Thor mm. or Ant-Man when, you know? Like, there's no... It's not re- stupid. It's It doesn't become stupid. It just becomes like, oh, yeah, he threw that in, threw that in there to be funny. But anyway, he walks the fine line perfectly, James Gunn does, and he's a brilliant he's an oh like he's he has total control he knows james gunn knows exactly what he's doing his control over the script the story the characters he's like a puppet master and he's very good at like showing his vision so i can't wait to see his dc movies down the road but for the guardian movies like the third one is his magnum opus it's his best movie in my opinion of his career and yes it belongs in a and maybe we'll have to revisit to see if we can bump it up but there are other strong heavy hitters, Eric. There are a lot of heavy hitters coming up too. So, I uh, I think A is good for now. And uh, yeah, terrific movie. I can't wait to rewatch it. It like I said, it for me it was even better on rewatch. So I'm curious to see what you think as well. High evolutionary too. I just want to say, great villain. Like he did a great job. But you're an absolute sicko if you liked that. If you're finding yourself rooting for that character. There might be something like a little, uh, you know what I'm saying? So like, I'm just saying, um, but yeah, I'm a villain guy, but like, but he did a great yeah, job. And like, he, that comes back to your ep- the episode we did of every hero needs a villain with Basam that he pulled off the a hero that a villain that truly makes you despise him, and that's a sign of a great villain, right? So hats off to that actor. He was uh, he definitely did his thing, and I'm sure we'll see him pop up in more. Um, he's kind of been a hidden gem of an actor. Like he popped up in Peacemaker, is what I had seen him in. He was very good in that as well. That's right. So no, I, I agree. Gardens at three. For it's so tough for me. Like I, I'm a big fan of Gardens of the Galaxy, the OG. So it, doing a full on this might be the strongest trilogy too of like MCU, and that's something we can debate as we get into these more of these movies there. But no. Great, great yeah. movie. I agree. It's a, it's one of the top ones for sure. Now, we're going to go back and do like from chronological order. So bring it back in release dates for the movies that we're, we're adding now. So bringing it back at the one that started it all, Iron Man. I mean, I still remember when I saw this in theater. And we don't need to spend as much time as we did for those two, but we can still give thoughts as much as we want there. Uh, Iron Man in theaters with my mom at um, Down the Hill where it's now the, um, what's it called? Mayfair, seen the stars, yeah. So we went there, no expectations, blew our minds. Awesome action movie. It it's a, a strong drama too. It, it just feels different than a lot of the other Marvel movies too. It has like a more adult feel while still having those comedic chops that we've come to expect. Like that laid the groundwork for everything MCU, right? Uh, for me, I want to throw Iron Man in S. I'm going to pass it off to you now. What are your thoughts on if we're to sell on that ranking? Before I get to the ranking, uh, Iron Man is a masterpiece because Robert Downey Jr. basically built the MCU, like off the strength of his acting. Like he made those Avengers movie even better. He's It's our introduction to, to Tony Stark in this movie. Robert Downey Jr. nails the role. It's a very, like you said, adult movie, real, more realistic, grounded to reality just with technology and stuff no no like fantasy yet um love the movie too i i have it in a eric okay. because i find i think there's five movies that are better than it but uh we can yeah. we, let's put it in s but maybe we'll move it how about that sure like we can do that tentatively put in okay let's do yeah, that we can do that for sure okay it is 
is that good though. Like it's a great movie. Don't get me wrong. Um, but like, there's a lot. That, I mean, we'll, we'll get to them. We'll get to them. No, for sure. Um, the next one that we may not spend too much time on, or I, for me anyways, like I don't have much to say on this. It would be the next movie, which was Incredible Hulk. Like I told Matt off air before we started, I haven't seen this movie in circa 15 years and didn't even factor it when we came up with this idea to tier Marvel movies, but it is on the website that we're using. So I must find a place for it. I want to say, like, I don't recall not liking it. I thought it was a perfectly fine movie, but I literally have nothing to say on it. So I'm going to hand it off to you in terms of where we want to rank this, but especially given my familiarity with the other movies, I don't want to put this high. <laughs> like, I don't, like, this ain't a B movie for me. So, Incredible Hulk, I think it was just 17 when it came out, and I saw it in the theater and I enjoyed it. I have rewatched it, though, later on when I bought it. It does not hold up. I did not enjoy it at all, actually, compared to every other movie. Okay. I think Incredible Hulk belongs in F. <laughs> oh, um, okay, it's nice. Just, it's, it's, it's dated. Like, you watch it, it's, it's, it, it's really unlike any other MCU movie, actually. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of other ones I didn't like either down the road, but, like, even those I would put above Incredible Hulk. I'd rather watch those ones than The Incredible Hulk. That's why Incredible Hulk's got to be an F for me. So. Love that take. And I'm okay. gladly putting it there. I mean, we only have two movies that can go in F, so why not have one of them that I, I haven't seen in like more than half of my life? And I will take your word for it that it did not age well. So I'm not in a hurry to rewatch myself then. Now we can move on to another Perfect. one that, at the time, honestly, when... Oh, I think I put the wrong one. Anyways, at the time when this was um, released... I had no issue with it, which would be Iron Man 2. I, um, you know, thought it was fine. Uh, Whiplash was kind of cool. I, I like Don Cheadle as our um, new um, War Machine. Army Hammer, not Army Hammer, but Justin Hammer was a solid B villain. Sam Rockwell, I thought he was pretty funny too. I, I want to say, like, one of the missiles that he created or like as a weapon was called like the ex-wife or something pretty fun. like he had some funny moments in there and introduced big plus for this movie was introduced scarlett johansson as black widow she was really good in that movie as a like kind of acting as his assistant i want to say so yeah had, had its moments and we had some howard stark flashback action with um your guy roger slattery that's that's his name. Eh? John Slattery. Damn. His name John. Is, his name's Roger in Mad Men, right? That's right. Yeah, there we go. I got the, the wires crossed there. So, honestly, Iron Man 2, though, I don't think in the end stacks up very well against the rest of the MCU. So I would place it in D for now. What would, what would be your initial rating for this movie? I honestly, my initial rating is an E because... Okay. I have the whole list in front of me and like I'm putting a lot of movies above it okay. and if the way everything's going to fit in the end I think Iron Man 2 is going to be an E for sure okay uh, it, did, it didn't age well like I, I don't like rewatching that one a whole lot actually I just found it very poor after the first Iron Man it's night and day between Iron Man mm -hmm. and Iron Man 2 and I think Iron Man 2 belongs in E um, but we can put it Either way, either D or E doesn't matter because we'll be switching stuff around, so... I got it in E, don't Anything. worry. Okay, okay. Perfect. So, now, I haven't tiered these in advance. I'm just going off the top here, just going in chronological okay. order. Um, Thor would be our next one. Now, okay. this two, for me personally, not one of my favorites. Actually, maybe do you want to kick us off, Matt, for this one, Thor? Sure. Sure. Thor actually grows on me every time I watch it. <laughs> I love the acting. Um, like Anthony Hopkins is great as uh, Odin, and I like Thor's buddies. R.I.P. Ray Stevenson. Mm. Um, no, I like the setting, the world of Asgard, the introduction, them fighting the frost giants at the frost giants at the beginning. Loki is always a plus in any movie he's in. Cool world building and introduction. The stuff on Earth with Thor not as great. This is the first two Thor movies. 
you know, Chris Hemworth, he behaves differently than the other one where he's funnier. So it's not as enjoyable. But no, Thor, I have a solid, like, C rank. Okay. I would say D for this one myself, but again, could end up being bumped up with other stuff in there. That's where my gut is right now with Thor. Okay. Because I feel okay, let's like do D. the tone of Thor, just and especially seeing him in other movies, seeing what the potential was with that character, I feel like is just not what um not that great in my opinion on on rewatch too. Like it has a lot going for it. But it's just such a rigid movie that, while, yes, there are some funny moments, like, and it's, it doesn't always have to be funny, really. If anything, serious is good at times. But it's just yeah. not, I wouldn't put in, like, the top half of Marvel movies off the top. But if other stuff ends up being lesser than, I could then see C. But okay. D would be my gut for now. Okay, let's do D. Sounds good. Um, do you want to kick us off again? Captain America, First Avenger. Sure. This one was a huge disappointment at on first viewing at the theater. For me, I thought it'd be more epic and a better movie, but I had no expectation. Like, I had heavy expectations. I, I thought it'd be completely different. The more I rewatch it, it's not as bad as I initially thought. Um, but no, it's still it's still a D for me, though, in terms of quality. It's in the lower half of Marvel movies. There's so much better out there good introduction to our to one of the best characters mcu has ever produced but it's d for me okay. so now i wonder if like i'm just really in the minority of this but <laughs> everywhere i hear like people don't really like captain america and the first avenger i, I remember loving it the first time i saw it oh. and also i've never like come down on it to be like for the tearing i'll i'll go with d here as well because like it's a team effort too, like I, we're not always gonna be pushing for either or's score, and I do think there is a lot that is better than it, but I have no problem with Captain America: First Avenger. Like when we start filling this out, I'll be interested to see yeah. what C has to offer that's better than that. Because I could, for me, I could push that to C, but I also have no issue yeah. with it being in D. What I like about Captain America First Avenger is the setting. It's really one of the only movies that were not in the modern era. And I love seeing like World War I stuff tying in real events to like fiction, a fictional um, storyline. His origin story I thought was great. I like Bucky a lot as like his, um, like he was kind of like the, the guy with Steve before Steve ended up becoming that dude in Captain America overtaking him as like the number one guy. And I like Red Skull a lot as a villain. I thought he was great. You got Tommy Lee Jones in there, um, Zola. Now, I I like Captain America First Avenger, but I think um, D is fine for um, for it. For now. And now this leads us to the end of phase one, which would be this has been all been leading up to, obviously, our first team-up movie, The Avengers. A classic in its own right when this dropped. I remember loving it in the theaters. For the longest time, like I had this in my top five Marvel movies. I think now we've seen a lot of other really great movies that, for me, it drops out of that S ranking. It's A or B for me. For now, I would put it A, but... I could also see it as we start adding more movies dropping to B. So I'm curious to hear what you think about it. I would go my initial vote is A, but what do you think about Avengers, Matt? Well, I love your gut feeling, Eric, because it's a solid A for me. I think it belongs in A 100%. Okay. This was so much fun at the theater, this movie. It was amazing, and it's I've rewatched it so many times since. So... Great, great movie. All of them together, finally. Loki as the villain. Great. Like, at its, when that came out, that was, like, the best action we had ever seen in a movie. Like, for, like, CGI, big CGI fights. Yeah, mm. for sure an A. Love that movie. Yeah. Nice. Um, I was actually re-listening to one of our old Marvel pods today. MCU Phase 4 Appetizers. Check it out if you haven't heard it. And we were talking about Loki, the show Loki. And... You had said that you were a fan, and I don't think you said it right now there, but um, you're a fan of Loki as a villain in 
uh, Avengers, or no, sorry, in Thor, where for me in Thor, the first time, like, he didn't really do it for me as a villain, but in Avengers, he was fully, full-fledged, more powerful, more evil into the role. Loved him as a villain in Avengers. I think this is where, like, this character really took off and hasn't looked back since. So that's just one thing I wanted to highlight with Avengers and the first iteration that we saw. Yeah. Um, I'll kick us off then for our next one, the first one of Phase 2, which would be Iron Man 3. Another movie that, and I think this is the case for a lot of the movies for me in the earlier days. I had no problem with Iron Man 3 at the time. Some revisionist history, I think, has made people look poorly on this one. And I would not disagree with that. I don't think this one aged super well. They kind of made the Mandarin be a clown. Like, it was an interesting misdirect at first, but a little goofy. You got your classic Iron Man moments. And, like, I do like what they did with him dealing with the trauma from New York. Um, but overall, like, this definitely isn't one of my favorites. I would say D for this one myself. I think it's a notch above Iron Man 2, but slightly. I think these are two like tough follow-ups to Iron Man, especially like, the Iron Man trilogy is one of the weakest ones because the former yeah. two, the last two just really aren't that good in my opinion. So, what are your thoughts on Iron Man 3, Matt? You you said them exactly when you said Iron Man 3 is slightly better than 2. I 100% agree we're putting putting it in d is the right move in my yeah. opinion um very big disappointment though at the theater like come on like you think after the failure of two like three would be epic but no like it's more disappointment so you you said it perfectly eric it does belong in d just slightly edging iron man three i could see iron man three maybe dropping two to e if we find the lesser ones are better than it but we'll discuss that later yep I so, yeah we'll put it in d for now i don't disagree with that um, do you yeah. want to kick us off our next two? So Thor the Dark World would sure. be next. Ah, easy. Thor <laughs> 2 the Dark World. This is the other spot that this will go an F in my opinion. Because I've seen this movie two, three times and I, it infuriates me how bad it is. Just the whole like pacing of the movie is terrible and the the bad guys and the acting. Everything's bad in this movie in my opinion. There was another movie I, I don't like as well that I thought could be an F, but thinking back i'd rather i think thor 2 is thor 2 and incredible hulk are the weakest two i'd rather like those are the, the ones i want to watch the least um but yeah f for me are do you hate it that much too I, I mean i went on a i feel like legendary rant in terms of quantum mania <laughs> so i don't really want to rip this movie as well i could i'm just gonna agree i think this is an f it's a slam dunk no-brainer this just was mm -hmm. not it I, and like I said, you know, maybe I was a little critical of Thor earlier in the pod. I, I think Thor The Dark World was a major step back and down from that. Oh, like, yeah. I don't even have much to say on it, honestly. Like, okay. Yeah. We just, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Captain America Winter what? Soldier. All right. This is when the MCU, like, changed. This is a game changer. Winter Soldier... Oh, this is... I'm looking at my top, my, the top. Honestly, Winter Soldier is an S for me. Because the more I rewatch it, it's like a super, like, spy, intrigue, thriller movie at the same time as being a superhero movie. Freaking Sebastian Stan as Winter Soldier, as Bucky, is fucking incredible. <laughs> Great, like, pace. Everything about it, Chris... Uh, captain and natasha like investigating by themselves and being rogue and all that like it's amazing i think i'm putting for me it's an s mm -hmm. yeah they they what they nail they really like blow it out of the water in this one and another thing that you didn't mention too that they really get down well was the action some of the best fight scenes yeah, oh, like man-to-man yeah. -man fight scenes boots to the ground cap versus bucky legendary knife flip and giving us a great villain in Winter Soldier, right? Like, that was a huge yeah. twist for me anyways, not really knowing about this character and having liked Bucky as a character in the previous um, Captain America. This was a, a welcome return. 
and you get like you said the spy intrigue that they haven't really nailed since Winter Soldier and trying with a few at least a few movies and a show now so I'm hoping with the next show Secret Invasion they can kind of get back to those roots but I would agree it, Winter Soldier like for the longest time was in my top five no brainer now when we when we really rank everything it's gonna be interesting to see what lands where. I have no problem putting it in S. It's an amazing movie. Like it really does nice. not mess anything up, and like, it has you hooked the whole time. Like you get a lot of Nick Fury too. Like being there's infiltration now from um, Hydra within Hydra. Shield. It's it's great stuff. You got a good twist in there, and uh, Natasha does her thing as well. Cap is good. Intro of Falcon. Really good, just great all around. Um, where are you at? Okay. So now our next, so our next one would be another 2014 entry in the MCU, Gardens of the Galaxy. Now this one was, I'll, I still remember, I was working construction that summer and there was this guy, couldn't tell you his name, but he was on my crew all year. And he told me, he was like, the Gardens of the Galaxy is going to be great. I'm like, you, the movie with a tree and a raccoon is going to be great, <laughs> like good one. And here we are having Gardens of the Galaxy 3 in A. And honestly, now I could, it's going to move down. Like you just said, Gardens 3 was your favorite one. I like Gardens of the Galaxy a lot. I think it aged well too. Like the humor still hits. Obviously not yeah. as much as the first time I saw it. But I was absolutely floored the first time I saw this movie. Dave Bautista was a out of nowhere. Comedic chops out of this world. Everything was hidden. I hadn't seen Chris Pratt in anything. He was a great leading man. You got... I mean the whole crew is just dynamite. Bradley Cooper, un unrecognizable in my opinion, as Rocket Raccoon. He does a fantastic job in that voice acting role. And um, oh, yeah. Zoe Zaldana is amazing as Gamora. Nebula I already gave some love to. You got the first glimpse at Thanos, really, other than that post credit scene. He has some cold lines in that movie um, that I still use to this day. Like, the only matter I do not take seriously, boy, is you. It's a cold quote so i would want guardians in s i don't know if it's gonna land there though in the end so i could see given where we're going i think a is appropriate for guardians of the galaxy but i want to hear your thoughts on it i think a also is very appropriate it's a top tier MCU movie or A tier MCU movie. Yeah, nice. I still remember the day I saw it at the. I still remember the day I saw it at the theater too. I know everything I did that day because like I wasn't looking forward to the movie. It was a Sunday night. I went to see it with my friend and I had no expectations and I was like, yeah, I'll go see it. And I remember being blown away. So that day is very memorable to me. Mm. Um, friggin' went to go see it like the next weekend with my parents it was that good of a movie like it needed to be uh, just the opening with uh star lord and him dancing on morag hopefully that's the name of the planet yeah it um, is it is <laughs> it is morag okay no that was epic a great the pacing in the movie is the best part it is so unboring it's the opposite of boring it moves a mile a minute you're never bored always something happening great characters you said it all eric rank a mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love that. The like I'll say like maybe a quick blemish on the movie, and this could be seen as a positive to a lot of people because it's a, a twist on your traditional final battle scene with a boss. Was that dance off definitely threw me for a loop the first time I saw it. Now I can appreciate it a little more. Like okay, like it makes sense with the vibe of our characters here. But it was definitely yeah. weird, and also like as a noted villain guy. I'm not I'm not a Ronan guy at all. I was not a fan of him. He was kind of a punk, to be honest. But I, I can look yeah. past that for for this one. Our next one, which would be another a very anticipated movie coming off of our last Avengers movie, given the hype that this one now had, Age of Ultron, Avengers Two. This is another movie that is. Um, 
actually, it's interesting to see what people think about it over the years because it got hated on a lot at the time, being a, a, a step back from Avengers 1. And then it's kind of looked back on as like, you know, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. Because of other movies we've gotten since then. And I would agree with that take, honestly. And even me at the time, first time seeing it, I had no problem with it, really. But I've grown to appreciate Age of Ultron more. And I don't think it's as bad as people say it is. That being said, for me, it's still a middle-of-the-pack movie. I could see it being our first C movie. What are your thoughts on Age of Ultron? Age of Ultron's grown on me a lot rewatching it because I wasn't a, the biggest fan at the start. Like you said, a lot of people were. To me, it's a, a solid B, actually. B okay. or C, I'm comfortable with either or, honestly, okay. Eric, because it, it is a middle-of-the-pack movie. Okay. It is over long. It's very long. There's a lot of stuff that that doesn't, like, it didn't connect. It doesn't hit hard. Uh, great action, though, and it's fun seeing all the Avengers together. Like, every Avenger movie I've, I enjoy when they're all together. So B or C, it doesn't matter. Like, uh, we'll put it in C for now, actually. And okay. It might be one that flips in B. I can see it flipping, but C for now is good for me. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so I'll throw it over to you then, the next one, which would be the last movie in Phase 2, the first Ant-Man movie. So Ant-Man 1 had, like, super low hopes for it, and I it, I feel like they knocked it out of the park for what they were trying to do with the movie. Had Paul Rudd, first of all, as a superhero, that's no easy feat. Like, he's known as a comedy guy. But they made it work, and Ant-Man 1 was very enjoyable. It's the best of the Ant-Man movies. Mm -hmm. They introduced technology that, like, they introduce... There's a lot of science talk in the movie, but it works. They don't go too over the uh, the top with the, like, little ants working and fighting and flying on them. Like, it, it, it doesn't go, like... They don't crank it up to 11 yet like they did in Ant-Man 3, which was r ridiculous. So Ant-Man, I think, belongs in the middle at a solid B, okay. in my opinion. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine putting it there as well. I enjoyed Ant-Man a lot. It was a pleasant surprise. Like, when they announced Aunt Paul Rudd as Ant-Man, first of all, <laughs> hard to take a character seriously when their name is Ant-Man. And when it's Paul Rudd, who, like, we know as being a comedic actor, right? Like, your role models, I love you, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> friggin' Four-year-old virgin. Yeah, exactly. Four-year-old virgin. Yeah. Virgin. Mike from Friends. Like, it's yeah. A, yeah. a wild journey. No, I just have to make sure I'm picking the right one here. Uh, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, um, not a big Darren Cross guy, I will say. Like, and, no. and just to bring it back, I guess to Modoc. Um, yeah, just it's interesting, right? Oh, two God. two different takes yeah. on that character, and both kind of misses. It's well, not maybe not a miss, but yeah. I just wasn't a fan of that character. Um, yeah. Next one, Captain America: Civil War, aka Avengers two point five. Matt, kick us All off. Right. Civil War, you thought I remembered my day for Guardians of the Galaxy 1. For mm -hmm. Civil War, I remember as a Saturday working the whole day and all day waiting to go to the cinema to go see Captain America Civil War. We get to the theater, I'm super tired. As soon as the movie starts, I'm wide awake, eyes glued to the screen. Doesn't matter how long the movie is, it's all entertainment. It's all some of the best stuff, the MC, like some of the best stuff we've gotten. Uh, it's definitely an S rank for me. Civil War is in the top five. It just, it had such emotion. And, like, Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans and Sebastian Stan were all, like, perfect in the movie. And just, like, their con their confrontations, their con their, you know, when you find out what happened at the end and their battle, the stakes, the emotion, it's rarely, rep that, that, that moment's rarely topped in any MCU movie. So Civil War, to me, is a no, no doubter for uh, S. Okay. What do you think? Um, so for me too, like Civil War, again, when that dropped, it, I think it became like my favorite um, MCU movie because like the stakes were so high. Like your first time you're really getting your full on hero on hero violence. The airport scene is like probably still one of the best fight scenes in the MCU. It's yeah legendary. The 2v1 Winter Soldier or at this point kind of kind of Bucky and Cap versus Iron Man is tragic. I, I find myself always rooting for 
Tony, even though I know what's gonna yeah. happen. But I, the the shot of like him fending them both off, like it's a long panoramic view of both of them on both angles, like them throwing the shield back and forth and just punching him at the same time is crazy. And the yeah. like I don't care, he killed my mom, like it's uh oh, just kills me. And um Yeah. The, yeah, I'm just looking at what's coming up. Like I could see S for now, but it's gonna be I think it, now we're, we got two S spots left, so it's gonna be a, a battle for those spots. So I can definitely see a spot for it there, for sure. It is one of them, the better ones, hundred percent. And were you a team Cap or a team Iron Man guy? Whatever I've said in the past, I'm like I'm I'm a team Tony guy. Like okay, nice team Iron Man all the way. I don't know. I think Robert Downey Jr. His presence is already like sorely missed just mm, in the MCU, yeah. and like he he made the MCU so much better. Just that character, that actor, like that could be a whole different conversation, though. So yeah, no, um, Team Iron Man, and it 100% belongs in S. But we'll debate that later. <laughs> <laughs> um, so next one, the next movie of 2016, Doctor Strange. For me, I feel like I've said this a bunch of times on the pod. Like, I wasn't really a fan of it the first time I saw it, but I was also exhausted. And it has gone better for me on rewatch. I I would say this is a middle-of-the-pack movie. Like, don't love the villains uh, really more than that. Like, you have a great actor in Mods Mickelson, but it doesn't give, like, the greatest of performances. It's a good origin story, don't get me wrong. But I would have a hard time saying this is above a B. For me, this is a C movie. That's all I'll say for now. What are your thoughts on Doctor Strange? I agree with you, Eric. Very, very average. Super yeah. average. That's like the first word that comes to my mind for this movie. Is is rewatchable. It's not like a boring movie. Benedict Cumberbatch is great. They did waste Maz as a villain. Yes. Um but no, it's very average, and C is a perfect spot for it, so I couldn't agree more. Okay, right on. Next one, now 2017, finishing up our Guardians trilogy, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, which, again, I, I was a big fan of this movie. It um, definitely is, is for sure the my least favorite of the three, but by no means do I think it's a bad movie. I actually rewatched it not too long ago before going to see Guardians 3. Quite enjoyed it. I thought Kurt Russell was great as Ego. There's some good mystery and um, suspense to that movie. And like you're not really sure what this guy's intentions are with his son. Is he genuine? Is he really going to be a good father to Peter after all these years showing up randomly? I think it is pretty obvious that he is a villain, but you kind of want to hope that mm-hmm. there is a place for them to bond. And that movie gives us some right. good, um, again, development for all of our characters. It bridges Nebula and Gamora's muddy past and brings them to a better place as sisters. You get Rocket and Yondu spending a lot of time together. Rocket realizing that he is a lot like Yondu and that he's always just pushing everyone away needlessly when all he really wants is love, but he can't allow himself to accept that. I like this movie a lot, honestly. I'd go like C or B for this. I am thing is like I know there's a lot of good stuff coming, but I would say B for now for Guardians Two. What would your thoughts be on that, Matt? I'm thinking B, like for sure. Okay. B's a very appropriate spot for the movie. Um, it's great. It's not as good as the other two, in my opinion. And mm-hmm. B is where it belongs for all the reasons you've said. Um, yeah, like James Gunn has not made a bad movie, so no B. B's a good good spot for it, Eric. Okay. Right on. So now over to you. We got the first of the Spider-Man Home trilogy, Spider-Man Homecoming. 2017, Tom Holland in the leading role. I've rewatched this Spider-Man Homecoming. I've rewatched this one a couple, like two, three times now. It grows on me. It's really, it's a really solid movie. Um, I love Michael Keaton as Vulture. I love the twists in the story with that. Um, it's a really fast pace. Tom Holland's great. We saw him in Civil War, but now he gets his own like 
intro story and like his full fledged movie. And I, but that being said, I think there are a lot of movies, not a lot, but several movies are better than this one. So I think it's a it's a B. It's a really strong B, but it's still a B in my opinion. What do you think? Yeah, no issues with that one at all. I agree. I think it's a great movie. Like I, I really enjoy Spider Man Homecoming for all the reasons you listed. Tom Holland is fantastic in the role. I loved his dynamic with both Ned and MJ, played by Zendaya, obviously MJ. Mm-hmm. I thought she was... I guess she really starts to shine in the second one onward. Like, in the third one, she's more of, like, a, a background character, like, offering snarky comments and, like, social commentary and stuff. It, it works, mm-hmm. but I, I guess I was a little too early to give her props in, like, what her actual character brings for story purposes. But I love Tom Holland in that role. The co- constant struggle of, like... Stri- hiding his identity from people and still going to class. And then he's got the mentor figure dynamic with Tony, which I really enjoy that his presence in the movie elevates it naturally, right? It's kind of hard to, I mean, I guess other than Iron Man 2 and 3, but with Tony Stark in the movie, like it naturally makes it a better movie. So I enjoy yeah. this a lot. Uh, Michael Keaton, fantastic villain. Happy Hogan, Marissa Tomei, great, great movie. But yeah, I think B is good. And I just want to highlight, like, as we're now really starting to get into it, Phase 3, undoubtedly the best phase of MCU. Like, right. We're in, a, we're in a run here of, like, they did not miss. Doctor Strange in the, yeah. like, this list of movies we're about to go on is the only kind of, like, miss, and it's not even that bad. We have it at C. Like, this is a crazy run we're about to go on. So, now the next one for you, Matt. Thor Ragnarok. Where would you put this one? Speaking of crazy run, um, didn't have high hopes for this because of the last two Thors, especially Thor two. But Thor Ragnarok is a is a home run out of the ballpark. Love Thor Ragnarok, super rewatchable. I've seen this one probably one of the most my most rewatched Marvel movie, one of my most rewatched ones. Um, love the humor, Taika Waititi, like perfectly blended humor and badass action. Kate Blanchett as Hera or Hela. Mm. Hella, Hella, yeah, yeah, Hella, the goddess of death is fucking perfect, and <laughs> the world they go on, like the when he meets Hulk on that world and has to fight, like everything in this movie is perfect in my opinion. It's like it, this movie on a personal level to me, like is hits every like. Oh, I, I love it, Eric. It's an A for me for sure. Oh a. man, okay, I thought yes. you were gonna go S. Yes. Like me, <laughs> no, 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 okay. No. I'm not that crazy. <laughs> okay, well, I was gonna say for me, I would say this is S. Like, I think Thor Ragnarok's Ooh. top top five MCU, like, no doubt for me, anyways. Like, that's where I would put it. Um, I think it's a perfect movie. Like, off the rip, first scene, yeah. there's some good humor, and like a re. This is the rebrand movie for Thor, right? Like, Taika came yeah. in when we needed him most for this character, and it set Thor sent Thor down a trajectory that. We like we haven't looked back since, and obviously later on maybe it might be for the worst. But in this moment, like yeah. if you just look at this one movie, you don't really have to think about everything else. It's yeah, it works perfectly. Doesn't overextend its stay. You get good closure too for Thor accepting who he truly is. Like he had been living with the burden of having to be the king of Asgard his entire life. That's what he wanted. When we look back to Thor one, that was what motivated him. Right then he had to become an Avenger. And now he's, a, he's at a different place in his life right now. And knowing that there are also greater threats coming in Thanos. And I love love what this done does for his relationship with Loki. Finally giving us that growth that we are hoping to get out of the... Especially with Thor the Dark World where they seemingly teamed up. But then obviously Loki still had his own intention of acting as King of Asgard. Pretending to be... Um, Odin, which is actually a great way to end the movie. That was a, a fire twist at the end. But I love what it does for Loki's character as well. You get in a new setting. You get Hulk in there. I love what they're starting to do with just throwing us a few Avengers in movies together. Yeah. Giving us different team-ups. Love that. The humor lands in this movie too. Which I think probably more than 90% of all the movies. Like the Guardians movies are pretty consistent. Thor Ragnarok would be right up there with I'm looking at the movies right now that we have like this is a top comedy no doubt and then the action is off the hook too when True. Thor comes in with the immigrant song playing not once but twice 
those are tough moments yeah. to beat. Hella, like you said, amazing villain. Kate Blanchett crushes it. Every time Odin's yeah. on the screen too, it's hype. Like when there's like the doom 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 doom, keep zooming in closer and closer to him in Norway on that cliff, just chills. I have a hard time leaving this off S, honestly. Like, I know there's only one okay. other spot left, but I think it belongs there. Okay, let's put it in S, and then we can debate it with the other movie I think should be in S. Okay, sounds with, good. Well, the one that's obviously... There's one that's obviously going to be S, but yeah, let's do S for Thor 3. Yeah, I know, and that's the thing, right? Like, it's a joint list. It's not... Um, we're going to have to come to agreements on everything there, yeah. so obviously concessions on both sides will have to be made. But me personally, like Thor Ragnarok is one of my top five favorite um, MCU movies, okay. no doubt. So I think that was you who teed that up, or was that me? I forget. I feel like that, was out me. There. that was me, so it's your turn. <laughs> okay. So again, Black Panther, <laughs> love this movie. <laughs> this Again, this is also one of my five favorite movies. So tough to leave it off the top, but I could see like I think A is pretty respectable for Black Panther. I think it ages well too. Amazing performance from Chadwick Boseman. I think he crushed it and had an understanding of what that character meant just in the world and also in the MCU. Strong lead, great supporting cast. Fant- one of the best villains too of the whole MCU again. Yes. In Eric yeah. Killmonger. Like, we we literally can't put it in S right now. So it's A for me. No. Where would you yeah. put uh, Black Panther? Oh, it's without a doubt an A. Um, we got a little appetizer of T'Challa in Civil War, but then we get the full meal in this movie, and it did not disappoint. Ryan Coogler directed a really great movie perfect introduction the world wakanda looks amazing in this movie the colors the action like the fights very solid movie it's an a a hundred percent an a Mm -hmm. yeah just uh amazing movie and now like speaking of run (laughs) or in my opinion getting to the best one in this run yeah which i don't even think i know we don't need to debate anything here Infinity War, <laughs> Infinity War S. Like, that's a, a no questions asked situation. Yeah. In it's my, in the my book, best MCU movie. Best MCU yeah. movie, 100%. It's um, one of yeah. those ones that we've talked about so many times. Uh, the in theater experience, one of my favorites all time. One of my favorite villains, like, legit, not even villains. Thanos is, like, one of my favorite characters of all time, if not favorite character of all time. Like, he's that good in this movie. Every single line of dialogue he has, like, I've probably quoted it. It's an annoying habit of mine is using Thanos gifts in conversation. But I don't care. I'll keep doing it until I run out of them. And I don't know what I need to say about this. Matt, you can... The floor is yours on Infinity War. Like I, like I keep saying about this movie, it set the benchmark for superhero action in a movie. And it still hasn't been topped, in my opinion. Like, it's it's perfect. Perfectly paced, bone-chilling moments. Cap in the subway, Thor landing in Wakanda. I don't need to say anything more. It's an epic, epic movie. We can move on now. S rank. Yeah. Agreed. Um, so and I'll pass it back to you, Matt. We got Ant-Man and the Wasp as our next one. Oof. <laughs> Ant-Man and the Wasp is a solid... Oh, this this is getting hard. Honestly, I'm gonna put it in E, because I've only seen it once, Eric, and I don't remember it being super memorable. I remember the villain. I remember certain things about it. Honestly, my memory is very foggy on this movie. It's an E, hundred percent. Yeah. Um. I agree. I think uh, it's really like you said it perfectly. It's not memorable. I've seen it twice now. <clears throat> I described it as this. It's a cat and mouse plot the whole time. They're trying to retrieve the lab and someone's trying to catch them while they're doing that. Like there, There's always a character who's chasing the lab that has the equipment to send our heroes to the quantum realm to find Janet. And then Ghost is after them too, wants the lab for the equipment that can heal her condition and you got walton coggins there too like he's just in the mix for some reason like just 
unnecessary character to have. I guess they needed him, though, to buy the black market equipment. So I guess I do remember what happens in this. They needed him to buy the black market equipment to build this lab. But anyways, it just... Nah. It wasn't it. Like, it, it has its moments. Like, I like Jimmy Woo. He was good. Like, his dynamic with Scott. But overall, it just really wasn't one of the better ones. I think he is totally accurate. So this is kind of our cool-down movie after Infinity War. Yeah. A more light-hearted look. And then I guess this could maybe also be lighthearted in a sense. But our next one, Matt, for you again, would be Captain Marvel. Okay, Captain Marvel to me is a movie I've only seen once at the theater. I enjoyed it. I have no interest in rewatching it. it was, it's a good standalone story, I guess, in the past, in the 90s. Brie Larson I thought was pretty good. I like Jude Law in it, but not memorable at all, in my opinion. Kind of sets up like... I can't even remember the race of aliens that can change appearances. <laughs> the Kree. Oh, no, the Skrulls. Skrulls. The Kree. The Skrulls. Skrulls. The Skrulls. Yeah. Which is kind of cool, like world building, like introducing more ideas. But uh, no, no, Captain Marvel is a D in my opinion. Okay. Um, yeah, it's... For me, it's like D or E, but there's also more stuff mm. coming up. So I think... We gotta exactly. save some slots. So I think D is accurate too. Like I saw, I have seen it twice. Not, definitely not one of my favorites, honestly. It doesn't have much charm. And Brie Larson, like, she plays the character well. I don't think it's on her, but there just isn't much appeal to her character in terms of Captain Marvel is not that likable. Like, there's not much. Mm-hmm. Char- she plays a very rigid character which i hope in the marvels the next movie she loosens up a little maybe is a little more playful but maybe that's the thing she just has to be that really serious your captain america type alpha who is a no-nonsense person like you can't all be goofs out there so it makes sense but for me it's just i don't know it um not one of my favorites so i i agree with d now I get the ball again here with another one that in a lot of people's books, like this is the best Marvel movie. Um, for me, it's not honestly Avengers Endgame. I like it a lot more every time I see it, which is always a good sign. And I actually do enjoy this movie quite a lot. I'm just looking at our, our slots here and what, what go, what can go where I think putting Endgame in like B is almost disrespectful but then locking up A, like for me personally, there is a movie I would put in A, but I think it does belong in A. It does a great job of wrapping up the story of all of our heroes, right? Like it's a um, perfect send off for Iron Man. He finally has that growth moment of I have to give up, give myself up for the rest of human, for the rest of the world to go on and live and beat Thanos. Like, I have to do the ultimate sacrifice. You get, in my opinion, one of the most epic fight scenes in the big three against Thanos. Cap wielding the sh- the, the hammer is an all-time moment in the theater. Like, doesn't matter what you think about Cap, and I'm not the biggest Cap guy. I, was, I had the biggest smile on my face seeing him wield Mjolnir. It was epic at its finest. And amazing movie they i'm glad they also didn't use captain marvel too much because she's kind of op as well so if you have her in the fight against thanos it tips the scales a lot you know they're gonna win though that's a thing but it it is fine i had no issues with them winning against thanos after he won in infinity war amazing movie i have it in a do you have do you have a different opinion matt would you say s so we have to maybe move some stuff what are your thoughts i'm very comfortable putting it in a but i I want to make a case for putting it in S instead of Thor Ragnarok. Okay. And you are, you, you, my argument, you've already mentioned them. Like it has th- two iconic moments in the whole, in all these 32 movies, Cap lifting the hammer and Tony's death and him saying, I, I am Iron Man. There's nothing more iconic than that. Like our, and Endgame isn't the perfect movie. Like there's a lot of pacing issues. It's long, but it doesn't have any bad scenes. And, it has iconic moments and the ending is epic. So Thor 3 might be more enjoyable to watch, like to rewatch a bunch of times, but I think Endgame belongs in S because of its 
importance and the stakes are so high and it's got those moments you talked about Mm -hmm. um however it is it is three hours it is very long it's not perfect in terms of like there's a lot of like conveniences right it happens really fast in the first hour and a half some might even say the first hour and a half is slightly boring Mm -hmm. that's not my opinion but uh, the the debate here to me is thor ragnarok or endgame s and a like Mm -hmm. i have no problem going with a though if you want to put endgame in a like i love thor ragnarok don't get me wrong so you're saying endgame comfortable in a like it does it belong in the top five so i'll give Uh, i'll give my take on this like swapping something out and this is not like just as a retaliation tactic but if i were to move something out it would be civil war personally because i enjoy civil war quite a lot in my opinion not a top five marvel movie still to this day because there there are some flaws with it in that like the whole plot that ends up getting our heroes to pit against one another is not the strongest. Like, you're kind of grasping right. at straws in making... Like, there's a lot of stuff that I could pick yeah. apart, in my opinion. Like, Zemo's whole plot... Like, it, like, you're relying on a lot of stuff to go perfectly right. And also, how does he know right. that a lot of these things are going to end up unfolding as they do? It's a bit of a stretch. Also, how much Tony is influenced by the one woman who... Not to sound heartless here, but talks to him about her her son dying in Sokovia because they saved the entire world but right her yeah. son died so then he has to completely flip his mindset on what sort of regulations need to be put in place so that superheroes can intervene in a timely manner like in saying that I'm team cap in civil war and I'm sorry in saying that I'm team iron man in civil war cap is a, in my opinion 100% right in that there needs to be a, a greater um, group of individuals who have the ability to intervene when no one else can, and that's the Avengers. Like that's what they're kind of built around. And then you're trying to legislate and regulate how they go about doing that. Like I understand it, but I think it's maybe not the best way to kick off the whole conflict between the Avengers to have them break up. That would be my critique against Civil War. I think Ragnarok's a better movie than Civil War overall. Okay. Um, but like, if I'm also fine keeping it in S. Like, I'm. I agree with what you're saying about Endgame too. Like that first hour and a half. I remember I was in the theater with Basim, and he turned to me at like the hour and a half mark, and he said, "Like, I don't know how I feel about this." And like, yeah, it wasn't that great to yeah. start, but it does get better yeah. with subsequent viewings. Okay. So, I don't know. Like, I'm fine keeping Civil War and Thor in there. And end game A, but what do you think? You made a good case. Uh, the the half of the movie is not. I think end game should be an A, okay. because Civil War's pacing and Thor three's pacing is so much better than End Games. Like the flow of the movie, so I'm I, I am okay keeping it an A now. You made some good points. Um, you also made some good points about maybe Civil War, maybe other <laughs> movies knocking it out of the S spot, but. I'm, We'll save it for after, uh, but yeah, A A is good actually, Eric. Okay, I'm I'm okay with that. Like I'm not super attached to Endgame. So. Yeah, like me too. Like I I like the movie a lot, but for like I get a lot of people who say like, it's the best one of them all. Like I don't see no, that, but no, no, no. um, it's it's a subject or yeah, like subject uh, subjective. Yeah, <laughs> always get confused with that. All right, moving on. Um, so our last one to close out Phase 3, which in my opinion is a, gr- a great follow-up to Endgame, which would be Spider-Man Far From Home. I quite enjoy this movie a lot. Like, I like Mysterio as a villain. I thought Jake Gyllenhaal was great. Again, you got that mentor figure to Spider-Man, which is kind of a theme in all these movies here. I like that they brought the setting yeah. over to Europe. It was, um, this yeah. is where, this is really where the Zendaya-Tom Holland relationship started on and off the screen i want to say but they did a great job at showing like that awkward teenage um, budding romance in high school like i love that stuff it's great like coming of age we're yeah. both i think like we're both suckers for that and uh, it's fun to see so i like far from home i would have it as b honestly to start and um, again getting crowded but i i would see it there for now what are your thoughts on far from home 
Oh, I couldn't agree more, Eric. Well said. Love the high school field trip feel in Europe. Good action, good twists. Um, Tom Holland's perfect. Zendaya too, like more fleshed out. You said everything perfectly, Eric. B is where it belongs. All right. Now, getting into our Phase 4. First movie of Phase Oof. 4, Black Widow. Um, Matt, you want to kick us off? <laughs> the mo- movie that was delayed for so long because of COVID. This is like the COVID era. Yeah. Phase 4, like, it was rough, not just because of the quality of movies, but no, Black Widow to me is a solid, like, nothing more than a C, in my opinion. I, I could put it C or D. I think right now I'm putting it in the C category because there was cool martial art fight scenes in the movie. There's some stuff that I like. I like uh, Florence Pugh and, as the Yelena. Um, no, I, I didn't mind Black Widow. I just it was very like, it had been the first MCU movie in so long at a theater for me. I expected a little more, but really cool like spy intrigue. It, it was average. It, average is how I would describe it. So C for me. Okay. For me, like I've only seen this once. Maybe I should rewatch it. I would say D for Black Widow, mostly because I'm looking at like, in my opinion, anyways. I have three movies above it, but we can definitely okay. we can definitely debate that um, going forward. Okay. But it's just like it not, that that for me is a movie that's unmemorable. Like I really don't remember what happens in right. that movie, other than the general plot of her going to I forget where exactly to meet up with Yelena, who I liked a lot actually. She was the standout in that movie for sure. And then you had, I just remember like the last scene of like the flying fortress in the sky, them like falling down and the exploding. I didn't like the villain in that. Um, I don't know, but I, I probably should rewatch it. But would you, we can start off with C and then see where we go from there. Okay, okay. let's do it. Um, the next one, which would be the same year, would be Shang-Chi, The Legend of the Ten Rings. What are your thoughts on that? Shang-Chi, I really enjoyed it at the theater. The more I think about it, it's still very average, middle of the road. Okay. Um, like, I, there's nothing wrong with Shang-Chi. It, just, it didn't bring anything. It wasn't super... Nothing we haven't seen before. I guess that was my biggest B. Great introduction to a new character, though. Um, but honestly, I'd have to put it a C. Based on the quality of the other movies above it, Shang-Chi, to me, is just average. It's a C. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm fine with that, given where we're at. I actually like this movie a lot. Um, I think, it, like you said, does a great job at introducing a new character, giving us, in my opinion, some of the best action scenes in terms of like martial arts, where it maybe mm-hmm. falls off too in terms of the action is like when we get to the third act and then you're fighting like mystical creatures. I don't love that as much yeah. as what we're really dealing with. Like They start off, honestly, so strong with the family conflict and like him failing to live up to his dad's expectations and the dad was a great villain too i was a huge fan of his and then you kind of shift the focus at the end to like the the soul sucking creature there so a bit of a step down in the end i am yeah i think c like for me this is better than black widow for sure i would say c Mm -hmm. um can put it there for sure now over to me for now yeah Yeah, um, for me at this point another one i've only seen once COVID era funnily enough i said i was listening to our our, one of our older episodes where i said i was extremely excited to see this movie eternals don't know if i'm ever going to watch this movie again in my life honestly like this is a f contender for me it's i'm putting it in e like for me it's e no doubt very boring movie almost three hours like unacceptable running time considering how little happens in it i understand you need to set up all these characters given their intros and stuff but man is it ever a boring movie from what i remember you got this all-star cast of actors too like it just fumbled the bag completely with this in my opinion and would have been much better much better served if this was like a disney plus series where you get an episode for each of these characters and it's maybe like a 12 episode thing. Whoever wants that on these characters. And then you can flesh out a storyline with them down the road. But like, like I've said in the pod back in the day, like the stakes never felt high. I was not once 
bought, never once bought into what was going on. It just was not it for me. E, in my books, 100%. What about you, Matt? Oh, it's with a thousand percent an E. Huge disappointment. When their bad reviews started rolling in, I was a little scared, and I went to see it, and it was just as bad as I as the reviews said. I'd still rather watch it above Thor two and Incredible Hulk. Mm. It had some cool moments, cool his the history aspect. I appreciated them living mm. like a long time. I like that. Super lame stakes though at the end, and like villain and all that crap and so much explaining like oh you're it's a hot mess it is 100 percent. we don't need to talk about it yeah yeah there there's potential there but they just really didn't deliver no oh, garbage yeah so our next one to close out 2021 a year with four marvel movies which is a lot right i guess because of what we missed with covid there yeah. so it'll be spider-man yeah. no way home i i really love this movie honestly like a lot of people say it does not age well like that that first time watches the peak for No Way Home because of the surprises and like the we obviously knew or had a strong feeling that Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and were gonna be in this movie and it, it really hit in the theater to see them seeing Daredevil too was awesome and then all your other legacy villains from those movies like Green Goblin, Doc Ock, I would say like those two were the standouts for sure. Even Electro, like Jamie Foxx did his thing as Electro on that. And then, again, in my opinion, Tom Holland acts in this movie. Like, he's he's leaving yeah. it all out on the floor. Like, all 60 minutes, he's carrying the ball, shooting, putting up threes, driving to the paint, getting rebounds, getting assists, like, everything there. NBA Finals for this kid. Really it's did true. his thing. Yeah. Very emotional moment, too, with Aunt May. Just gut-wrenching. And then the end, too. Like, the tears were flowing like the salmon of Capistrano in the theaters when he had to make that. He made the ultimate Tony Stark sacrifice, too. Obviously not to the same extent. Yeah. But, like, he had everyone in his life who he cares about and care and care for him forget about who Peter Parker is. Absolutely wild. The fight scene with Green Goblin, too, with that music. It's almost like... Emperor Palpatine Sith like music that you hear at the end of Attack of the Clones when Count Dooku comes and meet up with him in the that back alley area industrial district just chilling love that scene I love this movie like for honestly like, this is an A movie for me but I'm looking at the movies ahead like it, it is tough to bump one of them down I'd put this as B given where we're at what are your thoughts on this Matt I'm very comfortable with, like, okay, the people that say it's just a nostalgic movie, that's the only reason it's good is because of the other Spider-Mans, it's false because of what you just said. The heartbreaking moments, the action, Willem Dafoe and all the other bad guys, like, what, you nailed it, Eric. Now, is it better than Guardians 3, Avengers, Guardians 1, Black Panther, Endgame? You see, that's where it's tough. So, as the la taking the last B slot, I'm, I'm content with that. I know, and I was just yeah. looking at that and thinking like, okay, is there something we can yeah. maybe swap? I was going to say out of those ones, it's tough. Like, for me, and this is obviously just my opinion there, but like Endgame, Black Panther, and Guardians 1, I would have above No Way Home. Then I'm looking at Guardians 3 and Avengers, but obviously Avengers I've seen mm -hmm. way more. And Guardians 3 I liked a lot. Like, I've seen it twice. I went twice to see it in the yeah. theater in the span of like 10 days. So, it is like... It delivered. I'm just thinking like, maybe down the road, like for me, I, I would maybe swap that with Guardians Three, but I think um, it's a, I guess a strong B for me, for us. And Doctor Strange. I'd be comfortable swap. Yeah, I'd be comfortable swapping it for the first Avengers movie on Yeah. Movie. Okay. Because if you want to do it, I've seen it now. Just it, go ahead, Matt. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Like, it's, you're pretty much going to say what I, what I was thinking. Like, it's aged a little, the first Avengers movie. It's not as, like, perfect as it was in 2012. Um, but, yeah, no, go ahead, Eric. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, I've seen No Way Home three times now. It, it still hits. And, like you said, too, more modern more emotional like it's it really and that's what i was looking at yeah. gardens 3 to maybe swap out where like they cancel each other out in the emotional aspect but i want to say yeah. no way home has better action than gardens 3 gardens 3 was good in yeah. terms of like overall cohesiveness 
But No Way Home edges it out in a few things for me. But yeah, Avengers, like you said, maybe has aged a little, not poorly, but has been taught by other. So I, I'm fine with that switch. Like I could, I could do that right now. Okay. Okay. We're doing it. Man. It's happening, folks. Um, Sweet. So I think it's who who just I just said Eternals and No Way Home. So now it would be you, Matt, for Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. This should be pretty straightforward. I mean, we have a C spot, a D spot, and an E spot left. Um, and I think these three movies will fit in those three. So uh, for Doctor Strange, a little disappointed, not going to lie. A kind of a mess. Well, you're talking about the multiverse. Of course, the movie's going to be a mess and complicated. I don't even know how the casual viewer watched this movie and enjoyed it. I did enjoy some of it. I like seeing... Scarlet Witch is like a badass, like scary. That was cool. But no, this movie for me is average at best. And honestly, I'm gonna, it's gonna be a D for me, Eric. Doctor Strange 2. Okay. So I'm gonna do some pushback in favor of multiverse here. I think it's better than Black Widow. And I would put Black Widow down to D and bump this up to C. But if you don't think it's a C worthy movie and Black Widow edges it out there, I'm fine with that as well. Honestly, thinking back, Eric, it, it was I it was better than Black Widow. Um, just the action was so much like different, but like the horror elements in Doctor Strange too, to me, like make it like personally, I like that more than the Black Widow movie. So if you want to switch it, I'm good with that. Okay. Put multiverse in C and Black Widow in D. I'm totally fine with that. Okay, because I, I have other switches. Yeah, I do agree with you that. Yeah, overall, it is a letdown, and it could belong in D, for sure, but I'm also looking at what's below it, and I don't think there's much that could right. up usurp it, and right. they did get some things right, like, I love the Scarlet Witch twist to make her a villain, I thought she was great, I thought the integration of like the multiverse while a lot of people were disappointed that they didn't really go crazy with it and give us a bunch of cameos i like the cameos they gave us like our mr fantastic john krasinski i think he did a great job in that role it was cool seeing like a different iteration of captain marvel captain carter professor xavier was cool they all got worked by scarlet witch though which was a legendary scene the first time we saw it i liked it a lot like the horror beats hit for me like there was good tension and just suspense there but ultimately i think it had the potential to be a lot more so it, it does fall short overall but i think better than the ones below it so i think c is good for that um and put black widow in the last d spot yes I think. exactly so we have one more yeah, c yeah. Okay. one c and one e and- and perfect you would have the honors of <laughs> placing thor love and thunder in its appropriate position now which would be e 100 percent. huge disappointment this is when you go over the board with what worked in part three i don't want to talk about thor for too long <laughs> it's been a marathon yeah. of a show but like yeah thor for e period yeah no we haven't gone for a while on this but I agree. It's an E for sure. It's funny because I actually did enjoy it the first time I saw it, but then I saw it again in theaters like an idiot and it really did not like it the second time. Um, I have already complained about the stuff I didn't like. Don't need to get into it again. But yeah, it was a miss, honestly. Taika, it was given too oh, yeah. much creative freedom. And I hope he doesn't come back, honestly, for the next Thor movie. In saying that I didn't like Thor, the OG, because it was too serious... I want him to go back now to a more serious and adult Thor. And if there's a yeah. fifth movie, like let's make it a little more grittier, darker. I don't know. I don't know where they go with Thor going forward there, but I think E is very accurate for this. Uh, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. That was quick. Do you want to lead us off with the Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, our last movie? So, see, like well, de facto C, C or are we moving it elsewhere, you think? So, this is the question I posed to you, Eric. Do you think Thor 1 or Captain America 1, should we bump that up to C instead of having Black Panther or Wakanda Forever in C? In my opinion, I think Thor or Captain America, those are better movies than 
Black Panther 2. So one of those should be in C, and Black Panther 2 belongs in D, honestly, because it was not at all nearly as good as Black Panther 1. Kind of an overlong movie, in my opinion. It belongs in D, because I believe, I think Thor or Captain America, one of those movies is definitely better than Black Panther 2. Those are my thoughts. Okay. I was okay with it being in C, honestly. Like, I don't mind Black Panther Wakanda Forever. It is long for sure. I, I like what they, and obviously had to do because of the passing of Chadwick Boseman, giving a tough task to choose yeah. your next Black Panther. True. Making Shuri Black Panther, I don't disagree with. I could have also seen Nakia, who is Lupita Nyong'o's character, become Black Panther, but she just doesn't maybe have enough screen time to be that character. There's for sure stuff they should have cut. Like, the, um, the whole Ironheart plot, I think, should have been omitted entirely. Yeah. Everett Ross. Like, sure, we like this guy, but... Like, get him and Valentina DeFontaine off my screen yesterday, please. Yeah. <laughs> no business being there. If you make this a two-hour and ten-minute movie, it gets a fire movie. You got Namor, who's a great villain... His origin story I liked a lot, like him burning that mansion mm-hmm. and he was a kid. He looked like a stone cold killer, this kid. He was like nine years old. Like I'd follow that kid if he told me to jump, I say oh I say I oh, 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 you know, so uh, I I don't think it's that bad, but I also prefer Captain America First Avenger than this. But I know you're not a huge fan, so I don't know uh, what the best play is. I'm also looking at like Ant Man, like I could see is this I better know, than Ant-Man know, and B? I like, I, in my opinion, Ant-Man and B is too high, personally. Do we, like... But if you're not a Wakanda, Wakanda Forever guy in B, like, that's okay. I'm just thinking, like, is there something else that can move up? Well, let's... I think... I think we should... I uh, Like, yeah, I, I didn't speak highly of Captain America First Avenger, but I, I'd watch that movie any day over Black Panther 2 again. I think... I think we put Black Panther 2 in... D instead of Captain America First Avenger. What do you think of that, just yep. first of all? Yep, I have no okay. problem with that. Done. Now, okay. for me, like I'm, I'm okay with where... Yeah, Ant-Man, I think, is our next one. Um, okay. So what are you bumping up from it, C? What would be your pick? So, is Ant-Man better than Ultron? Is Ant-Man better than Shang-Chi? Is it better than Doctor Strange? I honestly... I think Ultron's actually better than Ant-Man. It's an overall, like, there's a bigger storyline at stake. You got the creation of Vision. There's some heartbreaking moments, you know, when Quicksilver, like, takes the bullet for uh, Hawkeye. And I don't know, there's there's more epicness in Ultron than Ant-Man. But there's also Shang-Chi, which I... I no, I think I like Ant-Man more than Shang-Chi. Okay. I think only Ultron would bump up, Ultron would bump Ant-Man for me. Man, so what are your thoughts? I'm I'm a Shang Chi guy myself, so I like this right. movie a lot. Like I think there is a spot for it in B in that we're if we're comparing it to Ant Man, for example, like it's you're looking at two origin stories for lesser known superheroes and taking characters right. actors who are not really known for these kind of roles. I think Shang Chi does a better job in terms of origin story in that you really feel for the main character in everything that he's going through in his life. You get a great storytelling um, technique that's used with all of your flashbacks, slowly finding out more information about what his uprising and upbringing was like. And, uh, like, obviously for me, it's always important there, but much, much stronger villain in his father. His name is escaping me right now. Action is, like like I said, some of the best we've seen in the MCU, especially for, like, hand-to-hand. The the bus fight scene's unreal. The scaffolding in... Wherever they are, I think it's like somewhere in Hong Kong or Shanghai, in um, like the fighting pits is wild, and those are the two off the top of my head there. But then even the fight scene with his dad when he starts wielding the, the rings, yeah. like I would want Shang Chi up there myself. What um, tell you? I'm yeah, <laughs> I'm not attached to Ant Man too too much. So like if if I'm I, I trust your opinion, Eric. Like, I know you have good taste. So, and you've seen Shang-Chi more than once. Like, I've only yeah. seen it once. So, seen it three if, times. If, if you're saying it's better than Ant-Man, well, let's do it. Let's switch her up. Okay. I do think, it, I would definitely recommend a rewatch, man. Like, 
Shang-Chi is aged well. Like I would say, though, the okay. only thing would be like that, maybe the, the dragon at the end, you could omit that. But I right. think B is okay for Shang-Chi, like for what it is and for what it sets up for that character. Like, I think he's um, he deserves the B spot. That's fair. I'm gonna go on the strength. Like I've only seen it once, so I'm gonna gonna have to rewatch Shang Chi. Oh cool. yeah, no, that was a, a mar- I'm sweating right now. Like, that was a lot. Yeah, it's looking good though. Yeah, I like our lists. Yeah, I like me our too. Tiers. I like them a lot actually. So obviously, if you're watching yeah. this on YouTube, you can see who's where. But I'll just give a rundown of everything from the top. So S tier: Iron Man, Captain America, Winter Soldier, Captain America: Civil War. Thor Ragnarok, Avengers, Infinity War, A, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, Guardians of the Galaxy, Black Panther, Avengers Endgame, Spider-Man No Way Home, B tier, Avengers, um, what is that? I look, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, my god, okay, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Spider-Man Homecoming, Spider-Man Far From Home, Shang-Chi, C, Avengers Age of Ultron, Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, Captain America the First Avenger, Ant-Man, D, Thor, Iron Man 3, Captain Marvel, Black Widow, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, E, Quantumania, Iron Man 2, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Eternals, Thor Love and Thunder, and then F, Incredible Hulk, Thor the Dark World, which is probably the least surprising thing that Thor the Dark World ended up in the last spot of this list oh man um long episode i am still like i would like to talk about the future of marvel because and i would honestly encourage anyone who hasn't heard our old episodes to go back and listen to us talk about marvel because the optimism that was in our voices would shock you in terms of where we are at now with mcu like i never would have thought i'd be like worried about where we're going with marvel that's kind of where we're at i'm I obviously watch everything, but it just doesn't really... Like, you look at that run we talked about in Phase 3, like, unbelievable. I don't know if we're ever going to see that again, honestly. I don't think so. Yeah. We won't, because it's been done before. Like, they're, they'd they have to come up with something so outrageously, like, new. Like, it's... Uh, I'm looking at our list, and, like, a lot of the, the C to the F is a lot of the newer stuff, so I'm like, ugh. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Guardians three um, is like and an E and F, E and F are so close. Our our E and F like it could all be F except maybe for Iron Man two. Let's be real. Um, Agreed. Nothing too strong there. Um, Eternals is like F in yeah. my books. Like if if we don't have oh, Incredible Hulk, much. if we don't have Incredible yeah. Hulk to deal with here, I'm throwing Eternals in F. It's horrible. Yeah, because Ant Man Quantum Mania was shorter at least. So yeah, yeah. I'd throw Eternals in F in a heartbeat. Yeah. Oh man. Um, best I, trilogy is Captain America trilogy just because 2 and 3 are that good in my yeah. opinion or yeah. Guardians I don't know <laughs> yeah, it's it's tough man like Guardians yeah. Captain America and Spider-Man are like obviously my favorite three the, the strongest I think objectively if you look at them like Spider-Man has the like a it was almost BBB which is perfect but then we gave No Way Home an yeah. A and then Guardians 2 as an S no it doesn't it's A A B but very strong like yep. and then we got S S C so yeah I know those are some the best trilogies for sure yeah um, yeah I thought Doctor Strange 2 would maybe give some legs to Doctor Strange in terms of building his own trilogy but yeah. didn't live up to the potential um, yeah. yeah do you have any thoughts on Marvel like Anything like you're excited for uh, at this point, or? Well, not really, because I've been disappointed in some of the latest TV shows as well. So, <laughs> kind of disappointed too with like the Jonathan Majors stuff. That maybe Disney's being very pre and like they're being they're jumping the gun too much. Just like when they fired James Gunn and rehired him again, like maybe like I don't know if he's guilty or innocent, right? So, well, they they built. They built the whole storyline based off his performance in Loki season one. They said let's focus on Kang now, and now they might like change their their change their tune, right, Eric? So I'm very super like 
super cautiously optimistic. Like I want it to be good, but like hell, I don't I don't think it will be, Eric. I'm sorry, sorry to say, I don't think it's going to be a good future for Marvel. I know it's sad to say, right? Like, and I hate to beat a dead horse here, but like Ant Man was supposed to be what sends us on this nice trajectory, but now it's looking unclear more than ever. And they haven't made a decision on Jonathan Majors yet. Like he was dropped by like everyone who represents him, like all these projects he was going to be in, except for Disney. So I'm uh, curious to see what's going to happen. I am. I think if he's not your guy going forward, you pivot. Like I think, but then the thing is, like they've introduced so many MC, then so many multiverse themes that do you recast this character or do you give us like Doctor Doom now as your villain, and you set him up, and then how many years is that going to take to set up? So we're in a tough spot. Like honestly, the best spot like DC is looking like great right now in that they just poached yeah. James Gunn. He's going to be the one, like the Kevin Feige now overseeing everything, making sure there's cohesion yeah. and writing and directing like the next uh, Superman movie, which I'm excited for. Jonah Hill was just announced that he was going to be in that. So that's going to be interesting as uh, General Zod, I believe. But, uh, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. I don't, it's not announced who he's going to be. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see, man. Like it's, I'm, I'm excited. Obviously, watch their shows they put out. But anyways, um. Did you and if we were to rank the shows, like one of the best things Marvel's put out in Phase Four and Five have been Werewolf by Night. Honestly, if you haven't seen that, go check that out. That's I right. Love that special. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I recommend that. The Loki and the WandaVision show were the, are at the top for me. I haven't even finished every Marvel TV show because of the poor quality. I heard Miss Marvel isn't as bad as like what's in my head but I, I really don't want to finish that show yeah but it, uh it didn't finish i don't know yeah i don't know what we can do like when the more marvel shows come out we'll watch it we'll talk about them and we can maybe do a ranking of all the shows once we have 10 of them or something but uh right yeah. now it's pretty grim yeah. i'm not excited for the flash movie for dc i'm not excited for the flash movie because it's kind of closing the chapter on the last phase but the new stuff I'm very pumped for, just like you, Eric. The mm-hmm. James Gunn stuff I'm very excited for. So well, apparently, well, after the Flash movie, there's gonna be Aquaman two, which apparently is horrendous. Oh yeah. From like the initial yeah, exactly. screenings, there it's been brutal reception. Um, That's terrible. Yeah. This has been a long episode. I still want to recommend a few things. Do you have anything to fire off, Matt? Sure, I'll just fire it off because, like, my brain's, like, I can't think right now. I'll recommend Air. I know you watched it, too. I loved Air, the Ben Affleck movie about Nike signing Michael Jordan. Because I like movies like that because I'm never bored. The dialogue's great. Is it cheesy sometimes? Sure. Is it a super predictable movie? Yeah. Love the characters. Love the cheese. You know, like, all, like, the... (laughs) <laughs> it's just a shoe until someone steps in it <laughs> quotes like that is like like your review nailed it Eric Thanks. really enjoyed Air like it's such a quick easy watch on Amazon Prime so that's all I'm going to recommend tonight agreed yeah Jesse Plemons or I mean Matt Damon really killed it in his role <laughs> there <laughs> and um <laughs> Uh, no, I, I truly enjoyed it as well. Like I thought the cast overall was really solid. I like that they didn't... They While obviously the whole movie is centered around getting Michael Jordan to be the um, representative for... Or the model, basically, for Nike in this like bidding war to get MJ, was that you never see him really... You never see his face in the movie. Like He wasn't the sole purpose... The sole, no pun intended, purpose of the movie. It was really about like the shoe and... Just um, the journey for like this uh, scouting guy or to find yeah. like a brand and reshape the name of Nike basically. So I, I enjoyed the behind the scenes look at, at it a lot as well. Like it's a it's all a one time watch. I don't know if I'm ever gonna go back to this movie, but yeah, nothing bad to say about it, honestly. Some good humor too. Funnily enough, I'm gonna recommend um, something that I've done for the first time in years which is going for a run, actually. I went, there's a track next to our place right now, and I went for like seven laps the other day, and I experienced what they call a runner's high. Felt fantastic after. I don't know if I'm going to run again ever, 
but it was fun to do. And now it kind of begged the question, like, do, do I want to become like a, a 5K guy one day? A 10K guy even, who knows? Probably not 10, but five would be cool to do. I mean, that's a goal maybe to accomplish like, next year or something. But I'd recommend, like, if you're a, I'm a, I go for walks every day, but it's it was fun to go running, and I feel like it's going to do wonders for my cardio and hockey as well. Actually, your dad told me that, Matt, and I saw him a few weeks ago, family get-together. He said, watch cardio next year is going to be off the hook. So I would recommend going for a run. And afterwards, I'm going to loop my second recommendation, and something I've been doing for, like, the good span of a week and a half now, end all my showers with a cold shower feels fantastic what yeah like like a quick honestly you're nuts for as little as five <laughs> seconds to as much as like maybe 15 20 seconds like a little little spurt there but and then when you dry off too like you feel like you're warming up whereas i feel like other way around if you're going from a warm shower to drying off then like you feel cold like you're shivering whereas this the towel offers comfort here it's soothing you from the cold excruciating feeling that you just had from that cold shower maybe that's a psychotic take but i think it really like opens the pores up you know it gets the juices flowing a little bit you can start thinking differently opens your eyes to certain things cold showers strong recommend especially in this week we're having right now in the 30s rip those cold showers people I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> uh, I've never tried it, Eric. I've never tried it, so just try it. Try so it. I'm gonna have to do it next time. I'm gonna have to do it next time, which will be easy because it's so hot outside. Actually, but exactly, so. exactly. Like yeah. yeah, running, yeah, running. I do. I run once a week, like half hour. Okay, nice. Love it because I get to listen to my music and it does. No one bothering me around the country road. There's like barely any cars. Run past some horses at one point too. My my dad's a big runner. I mean, he just finished a 10k in under an hour. Oof. Like, he's he's good? a machine. Nice. Um, so yeah, you know, good. Those are solid recommendations. Or one solid recommendation. Yeah. The cold shower. I'll get back to you next episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, do it. And report back. You know, let the listeners know. Am I crazy oh, or yeah. am I on to something? Here? I will. All right. Good. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. I have one more thing I could just throw in there. Uh, okay. I've um, started reading this book called The Inheritance Game. And my mom recommended it to me, actually. Great book. Like, it's very hard to find a fictional novel that like captivates you from the start. And this book definitely did that for me. It's a page turner. Very easy to read. I love how it's written. I went into it like completely blind my mom just said it was a good book she didn't even say what it was about i just went into it and i know like obviously i like sometimes do this with my recommendations i don't even say what stuff's about so for this i will give a bit of a background on so in a nutshell it's about a girl who is like kind of struggling to make ends meet and um like suddenly finds herself in a situation where she inherits money. Like it is in the title of the book, right? Inheritance games, but it is not as simple as things seem to be. So there's a lot of twists. There's um, games, you know, inheritance, there's games and stuff. And we, it, for me, like it's a, it reminds me of a lot of young adult book series, but it is set in a, a real world. Like it's not, um, Full on, full on fiction like Hunger Games style or Divergent right. or whatever, and I don't really want to yeah. say what it reminds me of, but I guess I could. It's like, it's a mix of I guess Hunger Games in a sense, Harry Potter, and the oh. mo the movie Knives Out as well. It reminds me of. Oh my god! So really? maybe I'm way off on like Hunger Games and Harry Potter, but Knives Out like a hundred percent. There's there's something there. So. I would recommend it. Honestly, it's a trilogy, a first of a trilogy, and I'm more than halfway through the first one. Looking forward to getting to the second one already. It's I could definitely see this being adapted into a series of films. So I would uh, get on the the bandwagon before it's too late. All right, I might have to check that out. Uh, I haven't been reading too too much so at all. So you let me know after the first one, like. Cause we'll, you're, yeah, we'll do. to be continued. Yeah, Might exactly. do a whole episode on this one day. Who knows? Uh, th this is a hundred percent not gonna be a 
crimes and punishment situation. Like I'm, I'm finishing this okay. book. I can guarantee that. All right, all right. I know you will because it's about 900 pages. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just a tight like 400 yeah. or something. Yeah. But no, that's it for me. Um, it's just been really busy. Yeah. Plus, I can't even think right now. It's, yeah. It's been a good episode. Oh, for sure. It's been a great episode. Just uh, maybe our longest one. I'm not sure. Anyways. It's up there. Like, um, yeah. yeah. It's definitely one of the longer ones we've done. So, like I said, I hope you've all been able to watch this on YouTube. If not, you know, maybe run it back. Watch this like, and listen a second time. Why not? And just, we will be posting all of our episodes on YouTube there. So, if you want to check them out. If you want a visual cue, like, just go check them out there. It's a good fun and added layer to the experience. But, yeah, Matt, um, great stuff. Again, any final notes for the listeners? So yeah, thank you, everybody, for listening. Hope you enjoyed this episode. It was I had a blast doing it. Let let me know if you agree with our rankings. If you would switch up some stuff, but I, I think we had a pretty solid tier ranking. So I uh, just thank you everybody for listening and enjoy summer. Yeah, agreed. Let us know what you thought about our rankings. Did we bungle certain things or some things criminally underseated? Other others overrated. Let us know in the comments. Message us however you want to go about it. So yeah, thanks a lot everybody for listening. Stay tuned for episodes dropping every two Mondays. Continue to enjoy the warm weather. And yeah, peace.